Hello? Nate Grimsman here. Guys, this is 30 Days to Believing Right, day number 28. I hope you've been following along. I hope this has been a blessing to you. Today I'm doing, uh, this is how it's going to go, I think. Today I'm doing review. I'm going to review everything for you today, or as much as I can remember. Day 29 tomorrow is going to be pray day. <laughs> I'm going to go through some prayers with you to help you. So, uh... We're going to do some prayers. I'll pray with you for a while tomorrow. That's day 29. And then on day 30, I got a little special treat to finish it off. So day 28, guys, today is the review day. So let's go over some things we learned. Okay, so the first thing we learned in this 30 days to believing right was, uh, let's see here, hold on one second. All right. So first, uh, real quick, if you're on the Periscope app watching this live or on replay, if you could tap your screen. Tapping your screen gives uh, gives it hearts, and then the hearts uh, are basically allowed to trend and things like that. And I don't know, it's kind of like a like. So you can tap the screen up to 500 times each viewer. So thank you for that. <sighs> okay, so let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for 30 days to believing right, day 28, Lord. I pray your Holy Spirit rest upon me as I try to review everything we talked about. And that uh, some people can pick up some stuff, Lord, maybe that they uh, forgot or they didn't write down or maybe they didn't get it the first time around. In the name of Jesus, Lord, anoint me. Hallelujah. I love when the Lord gives you a, a, a scripture, you know, or a, not a scripture, a song in your heart, you know. And sometimes he doesn't always give me just, uh, you know, Christian songs. Sometimes he gives me like a secular song and I sing it, you know, like a, uh, right now I got an oldie song, like, you know, like from the 60s or 50s inside of me. I'm not going to say what it is, but it's a really good song. And it's all about the Holy Ghost taking over America, basically. That's what I got in my heart right now. So, we'll, uh, uh, so I'm really excited. So, guys, here we go. So the review. Let's just review real quick. So we first started off uh, with basically uh, uh, how we are dead, right? We're dead to sin. We're dead to the world system. We're dead to the old man. And then we went through Romans 7, remember, and we talked about... Uh, how we died to the law, we died to the world system, we died to the old man, and then we resurrected and we're married to Christ in the spirit. So remember, we died uh, to this old covenant, to the fleshly commands, to all the world stuff. Now we're alive, right, in the new covenant, right, in the Holy Ghost, in the spirit. We're new creatures in Christ. We're no longer in the flesh where we were over here. Now we're in the spirit. We're in the new covenant, Okay. So we talked about the old versus new covenant a little bit, right? So the old covenant was fleshly commandments. Remember, old covenant was fleshly commandments. And the new covenant is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Love your neighbors yourself, right? So old covenant works righteousness, right? You get righteousness by works. New covenant is all righteousness by faith alone, guys. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? It's good. the good news for a reason. So we talked about that. I talked about a lot of stuff, really. Talked about how uh, maybe to deal with some family member issues, uh, how to, uh, 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 how, how like a soft answer turns away wrath. I think I talked about that a little bit, how you uh, really need to um, be wise with dealing people and remember your focus is to love your neighbors yourself. So you always stay in the spirit when you're dealing with people or with your family members. And we talked about uh, soul ties or how that uh, people can be, uh, you can have emotional ties to people that maybe you sinned with in the past or people who are just close to you in life. They just be kind of, you get emotional tied to them. Talk about how idols, people become idols to us or they feed us emotionally. And so you can dismantle that stuff and see how people are feeding you emotion and be like, you know what? That person's not supposed to be my emotional my emotional um, giver. It's supposed to be the Holy Spirit. So we talked about that. We talked about how we resist the devil, right? We resist the temptations through resisting and disagreeing with the enemy, right? Disagreeing with what he's saying about us. I was just on a uh, phone call earlier with someone and they were talking about uh, somebody I know and they were talking about uh, they just this morning, they, they started getting these negative thoughts and they almost went negative when they're talking to the phone. I reminded them, Hey, no negativity here. We got the Holy ghost. There's nothing to be negative about, right? So there's nothing to be negative about ever in your life. Cause you have the Holy ghost in the blood of Jesus. And if you don't have the Holy ghost today, you need to cry out to the Lord in prayer. Jesus, give me the Holy spirit, please Lord save my soul. 
I confess Jesus as Lord, and I believe with all my heart that God raised him from the dead. I need the blood of Jesus to cleanse me from every sin, past, present, future. I need the blood of Jesus to speak for my righteousness. I need the blood of Jesus over my family and my life. Okay, so ask God to save you for the Holy Spirit to come in your heart. Give your whole life to Jesus. There's nothing, uh, there's no bigger decision in life than the decision uh, to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and to really believe that Christ is the Messiah. So Jesus is the Messiah. So we talked about that. We also talked about a lot of stuff. So uh, we talked about dismantling strongholds, how strongholds are built through trauma, through generational stuff, through wrong believing, through sin, through the world system, through media, through what we see when we're children. We, you know, we build all this stuff, rejection we had in the womb, whatever it is, these strongholds or demonic spiritual strongholds, however you look at them, uh, Paul called them fortresses or strongholds. And he said the weapon of our warfare are, is not carnal. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. So they're not worldly weapons. We're not dealing with uh, physical enemies. We're dealing with principles principalities, right? Principalities in the air, uh, in the heavenlies, in the, in the atmosphere. We're dealing with principalities that follow you around and stalk you and try to get you to do stupid things and try to discourage you and try to bring you wrong people in your life and try to take away your finances and try to take away your health, give you mental illnesses, all this stuff. So you're dealing with principalities and stuff and they're built, somehow they build inside of us through lies, through trauma and all that stuff. So truth is what sets someone free. So if you're dealing with mental illness, or torment or whatever you're dealing with in life. Truth is what sets you free. So what's the truth around your situation? What's the truth? So you're dealing with financial stuff. You're dealing with deliverance needs. You need healing. You need all stuff. Well, so what's the truth? Jesus took all my sins on the cross. Jesus healed me 2,000 years ago. Jesus delivered me 2,000 years ago. Jesus prospered me 2,000 years ago. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is my King. Jesus is my friend. Jesus is my Savior. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. All about Jesus. So focus on Jesus and not your issues. The longer you deal, you you know, I used to have schizophrenia. Like I, I tell everybody, I used to, not everybody, but if it comes around, I tell them I used to have schizophrenia and schizophrenia. Uh, what it did for me anyway, was it made me, or what was going on with me was that it felt like these voices were like my friends. So I talked about that a little bit, how they're not your friends, voices, negative thoughts, those I am statements that are negative inside your brain. Those are not your friends. They need to be disagreed with. You hear a voice in your head or a thought in your head that says, I am depressed. Boom! That's not from the Holy Ghost. Needs to go in the name of Jesus. I disagree with that thought process right now. Okay? So, when I was, uh, when I was hearing these voices, when I was hearing these things talk to me, and these demonic things talking to me, I, I had to learn how to disagree with them and not be their friends, okay? So demons and negative thoughts and all that stuff are not your friends. You don't want to talk with them. You don't want to agree with them. They want you to make an agreement. So I talked about the power of agreement. We make agreements with things. We make agreements that were ugly. We make agreements that were rejected. We make agreements that were sick. We make agreements that we don't have any money. We make agreements here, agreements there. Guys, you have to let go of the agreements that you've made with the enemy with the negative thought processes. What are the agreements you've made? Sometimes agreements are so deep, you might not find, you know, God might not reveal it to you until you're a little bit stronger to deal with it. You know, I was molested as a child. And I literally did not even ever think about it, never even remembered it until I was like 16 years old, you know. Um, sometimes this stuff's deep, it's buried, and it doesn't come out until a certain time. So give yourself grace and just continue to, uh, to uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ for healing and deliverance. Uh, you know, and I talked about how perseverance is very important, how patience, God is building patience in you. So remember that patience, right, patience builds character and character hope. Okay, so you want to allow the Lord to take you through times in your life to build patience and character in you. So you've been dealing with things your whole life. You've been dealing with things with all these people. Da, da, da. Don't go down the mountain anymore. Okay, I talked about that as well. So it's like fishing. Okay, the enemy sends something to you, a principality or a lie or something going on in your life. He sends this thing to you. It's like fishing and you eat it like a worm, like the fish eats the worm. Okay. You eat it, and then it causes torment, or you go around the mountain some more. He doesn't switch the food he feeds you. He keeps, keeps sending the same principalities and the same temptation over and over if it works, okay? So if it works, he's still going to send it to you. So if you always get offended when you're driving at those people that cut you off, and you always get offended and frustrated, guess what he's going to send you? 
people cut you off. That's well, it's always going to send you. You're not going to get different people. You're going to get the same type of principality. That person at work that bugs you all the time and you get frustrated and you quit your job to go find another job because that person at work was bugging you so much. Guess what? You're probably going to deal with the same type of principality in that new job. So you can't run from the tests. <laughs> you have to go through them. And the way to go through them is to humble yourself. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. He will exalt you in due time. So humble yourself and realize that you need to cling to the Holy Ghost. You cling to Jesus. He is your uh, He is your spouse. You cling to the Lord Jesus. So you're dealing with a weird principality. Something's going on in your family. Whatever. Cling to the Lord and do your best to stay in the Spirit. So I talked about staying in the Spirit. Be in the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, Kindness, gentleness, goodness, self-control, humility. All these things are the fruit of the Holy Ghost. I always wanted, I talked about how I always wanted to walk in the Holy Ghost or walk in the Spirit, as they say. Because if you walk in the Spirit, you do not fulfill the lust of the flesh. What does that mean? Do I want, you know, and I talked about how, what does that mean? I don't eat pork or do I not, I keep Sunday Sabbath, Saturday Sabbath. What is walking in the spirit? What is walking in the word? I don't understand. Walking in the word, walking in the spirit is walking in Christ, which is, he is love. God is love. So walk in love and love fulfills the love, the law, right? So love is your, your, uh, the flavor where you're supposed to be at. So if you're not in love and joy and peace, then you're somewhere in your strongholds or in your flesh, right? So if you're dealing with you're dealing with stuff and you're feeling de- discouraged, depressed, fearful, all these things, that's not the fruit of the Holy Ghost. So you can disagree with it. It's okay to say I'm dealing with this thing, right? I'm dealing with depression, I'm dealing with fear, I'm dealing with these voices, I'm dealing with sickness, I'm dealing with these things, but it's not mine. I am not depressed. I am not broke. I'm not saying that anymore out of my mouth. Okay, so your I am statements are very important. So I want to reiterate that in this 30 days to believing right. I am statements, very important. You can tell when somebody's in their emotions or their soul usually when they say, I just feel like. Usually when you're counseling someone or they're in a bad mood, they say, I just feel like they don't like me. I just feel like I'm always going to be broke. I just feel like I'm depressed. I just feel, I just feel. Bingo, red flag, that person's usually coming from their soul area, okay? So feelings are good to have. We need feelings, but you don't want the negative emotions to be who you want, what you walk in, okay? <laughs> right? Because Paul said that the, uh, the grieving of the world or the, uh, uh, the sadness of the world brings death, right? So grieving in the world or sadness of the world brings death, okay? So depression, that is like a, that, that makes you feel like you, you know, that you want to die or whatever. So the sadness of the world, the grieving of the world produces death and despair and all those things. But the grieving, you know, the, the, of repentance, godly sorrow, that's what it is. Godly sorrow brings you to repentance, okay? So having sorrow in a godly sense can bring you to repentance and uh, renewal of the spirit and, and uh, that burden lifting off of you and stuff. Speaking of burdens, so I go to this stuff. So burdens are, uh, uh, you don't want to carry burdens, okay? So the Bible says that uh, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Come to me, all who labor, right? So you're laboring out there. You're working hard. You're trying. You're praying. You're doing all stuff. Come to me, all those who labor. Come on in. Come on. Take your yoke. Take my yoke upon me, you, you know? Take my yoke upon you. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. So if you're all frustrated, running around, always tired, you don't know what you're, you know... You, Whatever, you're so busy, da da da. That's usually a red flag that you need to take a step back and find things. I talked about this as well. I'm doing a review, right? So uh, I didn't even write any notes. I'm doing pretty good. Okay, so. Uh, it's usually you're entangled in the world system. The Bible says that a good soldier doesn't entangle himself in the affairs of this life. So where are you entangled in the affairs of this world? Where are you entangled? Is your business taking every second of your life? Is, is uh, you know, are, are, are your family, is your family doing a bunch of stuff that's not producing any good fruit and you're just running around from to meetings or to this and that stuff and it's just taking all your time and so what, what I believe the Lord showed me is to make my life very simplistic. So try to make your life very simplistic. For example, if you have, um, 
like, you know, uh, let's say you have a, let's just, I'm just using for example, let's say you have a, uh, a sound system in your house, okay? This is just an example. You have a sound system in your house. You want to listen to the music, okay? So you, you turn on the music, okay? If your sound system is so complicated, it takes 20 minutes to get your, your system all set up so you listen to music. By the time, it just takes all that time away from you that you could be listening to music. So in the same way, things in your life could be good things, like you want to listen to music, but it might be set up wrong. Wrong, that's taking all your time. So what in your life can you reorganize so that it's easier and more simple because the most valuable thing you have in life is time, right? So you have time. We don't know when the Lord's coming back. So you want to grow close to him and you want to have time. You want to have time for prayer, for worship, for church, for volunteering, for helping your community, for your family. You want to have time, guys, okay? So remember, time is very important. So what are you wasting your time on? If it's not something that you like to do, you really like to do, and you just do it because your friend does it or whatever, maybe it's something you need to just let go of and say, you know what, instead of that, I'm going to do this because that's, you know... Uh, you know, do you work out for 10 hours a day? Maybe you should cut it back to six hours a day. You know what I mean? Like spend more time with the Lord or spend more time with your family. Or if you're feeling stressed, just take a step back and write down everything you got to do during the day or during the week. Write down your schedule. Write it down. Okay, this is what I do at 8 a.m. I eat oatmeal. At 8.15, I got to feed the dogs. Da, da, da. Oh, I have uh, I have four dogs. One just passed away. Should we get another dog? I have four of them. Now we have three of them. Should I get another dog or should I maybe just uh, not get another dog right now? Because the dog takes a lot of energy and a lot of time. You see? So you weigh if you want another dog or you don't want another dog. Is four dogs good? Three dogs? Five dogs? What should we have? So you can you can kind of see how you get you get uh, put in the world system, right? And it just it just entangles you. So a good soldier does not entangle himself with the affairs of this life. <laughs> Pretty cool, huh? So dis disengage. Disengage with all that stuff. Live in the Holy Ghost and ask the Lord what's best for your life and for your family. Does he want you to do that? Is that good for your family? Is that producing fruit? So the way I base it, the way I see it all is that is it something that is uh, producing fruit in my life? Is it something I enjoy and it's producing fruit in my life or in my family's life or whatever? So I've learned, uh, you know, I used to think that I used to think like, okay, don't sin. You know, if I sin, uh, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna burn in hell, or God's gonna hate me, or I'm gonna grieve the Holy Spirit all the time. Da da da. And so I, I lived like sin focused all the time. And I was like, oh, is this the God's will? Oh, I just sinned. Oh my gosh. Uh. And a lot of you out there I, are still resting on your own behavior for your salvation, and that's really bad. Do not rest on your own behavior for your salvation. You rest on Christ's behavior, and that's another thing I talked about. Christ was sinless on your behalf. So don't be sin focused. You want to be Christ focused, Christ in you, the hope of glory. The more you focus on your sin or the issues in your life, the more they manifest. That's, that's usually how it works. Okay. So remember to go back to your focus is on Christ and what he did for you. You're struggling today. Remember, there's no condemnation in Christ and God is working something in you. And then start believing that you're righteous, even in the midst of your darkness. You're still righteous, okay? And as you believe you're righteous, this is hard for some people to get. As you believe you're righteous and holy by faith, you start manifesting the fruit of the Holy Ghost. It's backwards than what the world says, okay? The world says do good and all this stuff and you're going to get to go to heaven or you're a good person. You're going to reap good things. Hey, I know a lot of good people, a lot of good people that really bad things happen to them. So that's not always true, okay, guys? So remember... Follow the Lord. Okay, so anyway, I was dealing. I was dealing with this. This uh, what was it about, Lord? Okay, so I was dealing with this issue of. Uh, I was always sin focused, and I was always flipping out because I was scared about sin. And oh my gosh, what am I going to do? Oh my gosh, I'm still struggling with pornography. Oh my gosh, I'm still doing this. Oh, God hates me. Oh my gosh. And it took me further away from the Lord. I was condemned all the time. So the first thing you got to understand: there's no condemnation in Christ if you're truly born again. Okay. I'm not talking to people who are just on the fence. I'm talking to people who truly have the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible says everyone who has the Spirit of God inside of them belongs to Christ. And everybody else doesn't. Okay? So you need the Holy Spirit. Okay? So I'm talking to people who have the Holy Spirit. And remember Paul said that uh, if I'm doing something I don't want to do, it's not me doing it. It's sin that dwells in me. 
Okay, so Paul had that internal struggle like you did, okay? Or you do, or I, I've gone through, or I still go through sometimes. And you have to go back to no condemnation, because in 8.1, Romans 8.1, it says, Therefore there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, who do not walk, what? According to the flesh, but according to spirit. And then it goes down to say, You are no longer in the flesh realm. You are in the spiritual realm. You are in the spirit realm. So you got to start thinking right. You are in the spirit realm. So the devil tries to tell you, you sinned. Oh, you saw that television show. Oh, you lied to that person accidentally. All of a sudden, you just get sin focused. You start feeling condemned. What I've learned to do is disassociate from negative thoughts about myself or my behavior. Disassociate from it. And then talk to the Lord about it. If I watch something on TV, oops, a little too much. Lord, hey, I don't really want to do that. Thanks. Hallelujah, no condemnation. What's it? I accidentally lied to somebody. Oh, you know what, Lord? No condemnation. Thank you very much. You love me. And then I uh, make amends with that person or I just try not to do it again, okay? So it's a little bit different than condemning myself, okay? And then what I started finding out was that as I didn't condemn myself for the junk that was manifesting in my life, the spirit inside of me, the Holy Ghost, started manifesting more of his life through me. And it's different than what religion looks like. Because <laughs> God's like super free. <laughs> so you're super free. It's totally different. Being sin conscious is really, really hard. Remember, uh, oh, so the other day I was at a restaurant and I ministered to this uh, this young man who he's probably about 20 years old in college. He was uh, sweeping the floor. So I started talking with him, real nice guy. And I talked with him, uh, I talked, with, was it him or somebody else? I don't know, I minister to people all the time. So somebody, I think it was that guy. Anyway, talking about the blood of Jesus and how in the, oh, it was, uh, it was uh, somebody who was uh, Muslim, actually. It was a, a lady that was Muslim. I was talking to her about Jesus the other day because I talked to that guy then the other day. Yeah, okay, so it was this lady. Okay, thank you, Lord. Okay, so I was talking to her about the blood of Jesus and how the blood of Jesus cleanses our conscience our conscience from sin and that the animal sacrifices that religions do it can't cleanse the conscience of the individual so you can go do animal sacrifices and it doesn't cleanse your conscience from sin only the precious blood of the lamb of god jesus christ can cleanse your conscience from sin so you don't have the consciousness of sin anymore i think i said that right of sin anymore what does that mean? You're not conscious of, of your past sin anymore. You're not like this sin-focused person anymore. You're not guilty all the time. So if you feel guilty and you're you're always uh, paying attention to everything you do bad and, oh my gosh, that guy's sitting over there. Oh my gosh, this guy's evil. Uh, all that stuff. It might be you just read it. I was kind of funny. I was like, uh. Okay, so I was like, uh. <laughs> I'm talking like fast. I'm trying to get all this out, guys. Uh, okay, so. So anyway. So here I am. Uh, okay. So, so, the, so. Be more blood of Jesus focused and not sin focused. And you'll start to see that the memory of sin and all that soul trauma and all the things that try to remind you of sin and all that stuff will start disappearing automatically. So God is a God of supernatural, right? He's supernatural. So he cleanses our conscience. I can't even say conscience supernaturally through the blood of Jesus, through faith in the blood of Jesus. So as you believe that you're forgiven forever, despite what you do tomorrow, what happens is, is you start uh, being freer from paying attention to sin all the time. And automatically the Holy Spirit starts operating in you where you're not doing all the negative stuff you used to do. Like pornography. I used to do pornography all the time. I would scream at demons, scream at them, come out. And I did well for a while. Two months, three months, a year. Did okay. And then all of a sudden, it would flare up again. Or it would, it would, it would oh, I talked about this too. How it kind of gets in your mind, gets in your emotions, and then pulls you into the flesh, right? Like the book of James says. You know, sin conceives and then uh, brings forth death, right? Okay, so I used to do this. And then... I would condemn myself over it all the time. Feel like I'm a horrible person. You're like a horrible person. I can't believe you do pornography. Oh my gosh, you're a horrible person. Hey, then I got the revelation. It's not even me that likes pornography. I'm like, yo, I don't even like pornography. That's not even truly my divine nature. So you actually might not even like the things that you think you like <laughs> in Christ. So you might think you like this certain type of thing, or you think you have this type of uh, identity issue, or you think you like uh, pornography, or you think this. In Christ, you'll start seeing what you really like. In Christ is purity. You don't like pornography in Christ. In Christ is sexual purity. 
Okay? And so, yeah, once I realized that it wasn't actually me that liked this stuff, then I could actually stop condemning myself over it and disagreeing with the thought process when it attacked me or when it tried to come upon me. And then if I failed and I did it, I would tell, I would, I would remind the Lord, even in the middle of my junk, I'd say, Lord, I'm righteous. I'm holy. This isn't me. Help me, Lord. This isn't me. I disassociate. This is not me, Lord. And so what happened was over like a short period of time, it was like, God. I don't have any desire to go do pornography anymore. So now I go on the computer and pornography's popping up. Let's say over here, there's an ad, you know, t- televisions on somewhere and there's, there's soft porn on the TV, all this stuff. It doesn't even bother me anymore. I got the Holy Ghost. I got the power of God inside of me. No weapon formed against me can prosper. I'm not a pervert in Christ. Does that make sense? It's pretty cool. So it's like you have to just start learning who you are in Jesus. You know, I'm not that person anymore. I'm not that person that wants to go look at perversion. I'm not that person that wants to go do that. So you just start believing who you are in Christ and you start manifesting what you start, what you're believing. So this whole teaching, all these teachings have been to try to help you believe right, that you are free in Christ, that you are delivered, that you're not addicted. You're not an addict. You're not an alcoholic. That's not who you are. You're not an adulterer. That's not who you are in Christ anymore. In the flesh, yeah. In the flesh, I could sin. Absolutely. My righteousness in the flesh is as filthy rags, as the Bible says, compared to God's. So yeah, I can make bad choices in the flesh. Absolutely. You can too. Paul said he take, he took no uh, no uh, trust in the flesh. So he didn't trust the flesh at all. He knew the flesh could go out and do something stupid. I could fail and do pornography. I could fail and do that. Absolutely, in my flesh. So I want to stay in the spirit. And how you do that is to believe the Holy Spirit lives in your body. To believe in the goodness of God. To believe that you have the mind of Christ. To believe that in the spirit, you are a king and a priest. And that you are seated in Christ Jesus, high in the heavenlies. Way above all principality and power. You have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. You have literally gone from here, old covenant, all this stuff, slavery to sin, all this stuff. Being tormented, all these things, over here to blessings. Without number, blessings, 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 blessings. Jesus loves me. This I know because the Bible tells me so. Amen. So you are completely free as you sit there. You're just going through the process of receiving the truth and it's growing in you. And then one day it's going to start producing a great harvest. So I know as you believe, you're going to start seeing a great harvest in your life. Everything's a seed, right? And it grows. So allow God's word to grow in you. Be rooted and grounded in the love of God. God's not mad at you. That's another thing I talked about. I used to think God was mad at me. Thought I blasphemed. I used to be in a cult. And a cult uh, uh, in the cult, they told me if I left the cult, the one true church, they said, then I blasphemed the Holy Spirit and lost my salvation. So I thought I lost my salvation for years. And I was tormented with schizophrenia, voices. I slipped my wrist. I was afraid I, I was going to go to hell. Then I slipped my wrist. I was The television was talking to me. I was freaked out, guys. Taking eight to ten medications. I was in and out of six mental hospitals in four different states, okay? I was walking naked on the street in Hollywood, California. I know what it's like to feel insane. I know what it's like not to have, feel like I have a personality or any confidence or anything. I know what it's like to be rejected. I know all those feelings. I've been through all that stuff, okay? So I'm not just somebody sitting here going, yeah, I'm perfect. You know, I don't do pornography anymore. I'm really great, da, da, da. No, I'm sitting here going, hey, I'm just a person just like you trying to go down the narrow road with Jesus trying to help you. <laughs> okay, so I'm really excited. Uh, so the review, so this is basically the review. You're completely free in Christ. So we resist the devil and the devil comes what? To kill, steal, and destroy. That's what he wants to do. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And he does that by lying to you and then you agreeing with it. Comes into your mind, lie, emotion, lying emotion, and then you agree with it. Then it leads you into doing something you don't want to do. Yelling at your spouse, doing pornography, screaming at the driver, whatever it is, okay? So catch those things and see them for what they are. They're lies. You take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. You take it and then put it right on the cross. Boop. No, that's not blood of Jesus. No, no. Jesus took that for me. No, I'm not rejected. I take that. I take that, put it on the cross. So Jesus took all the rejection that you feel inside your heart or inside your soul. Jesus took all that. So it's not even yours to bear, uh, bear anymore. You don't have unforgiveness. You know, people are always like, oh, you got unforgiveness. You got like, oh, no, you're agreeing with unforgiveness. You don't have unforgiveness. You got the Holy Ghost. You can't forgive people without God's forgiveness in you. 
So you're just agreeing with unforgiveness. You actually don't have it. It's just a stronghold. Just like I was agreeing with pornography. I actually don't have that in me. It was part of my soul somehow uh, put in there. Okay? Through trauma, through, through past molestation or whatever I went through when I was a kid. Okay? So these things get in there and then they build these strongholds and then we operate in them. So it's like, it's like uh, two personalities. Like, here's you and the Holy Ghost, happy, joyful all the time. Ha, ha, ha. And then over here, here's rejection and pain and all that stuff. And it's over here. See, here, Jesus took everything on the cross for you. Here, you're still living in this area where it's not crucified or you haven't believed yet that it's not you anymore. Jesus took rejection. He was rejected for men, for us. He was rejected by the Father at one time. So Jesus took the ultimate rejection to be rejected by the Father for you. And so now when you go through rejection, you could say, yes, that is a fact. Somebody did reject me and that it comes with some pain. Absolutely. But I'm not going to sit there and dwell on that because I'm going to, I'm going to lean over and I'm going to push it under the cross. That's how you get inner healing guys. You just see it for what it is. Okay. That's, that is a trauma and a pain that actually happened to me. I was molested as a child. I did do a lot of pornography. I was rejected by people that loved me or that I loved. I have gone through a lot of stuff. Okay. That's a fact. But the truth is, is that Jesus took it all. And so it's not mine to bury or carry anymore or to have a burden of anymore. So today, just take a deep breath and let go of all this emotional stuff. Just let it go. Lord, I feel depressed. Lord, but it's not my own. It's not my feeling. It's some sort of stronghold. So here you go. Take depression, Lord. You took it on the cross, Lord. Take it from me, Lord. And I'm going to believe as I trust in your blood and in the cross of Jesus. See, guys, it's all about the cross of Jesus. Don't let people take you away from the cross of Jesus, okay? Don't let people take you away from that. Don't let people take you away from the cross of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I failed to know, or I, I, didn't, I chose not to know anything among you except Jesus Christ and crucified. So Paul would carry this message. He'd basically say, hey, Jesus Christ and crucified. Jesus is your answer. It's all about the cross. It's all about the blood. It's all about the resurrection. What did Jesus do for you? So write it down in your notes. What did Jesus actually do for me? Jesus took every single bit of rejection from my life. Jesus took every single bit of discouragement from my life. Jesus took all the disease, diseases uh, and sicknesses. That's what he did. Write it down. Jesus took all my poverty and all my lack. Jesus took all the fear about my family on the cross. Jesus Jesus took all this stuff <coughs> and start writing it down. This is what Jesus did. Jesus took that mental illness on the cross. And then every time those voices come or every time that depression tries to come on you or you get discouraged, you're going through the discouragement or the fear, disassociate from it, disagree with it and say, Lord, I'm feeling that again. I cling to you, Lord. Now I'm putting it on the cross, Lord. This is yours. Hallelujah. Take communion. Believe in the blood of Jesus and the broken body of Christ. Take communion. Raise up your hands, right? Paul said, I pray that, or I wish that men everywhere, right? So when we come to uh, pray, uh, to a uh, uh, to a Christian meeting, Paul wanted men everywhere to raise their hands without doubt or anger, right? In faith in Jesus. So we're supposed to raise our hands up. So next time you're at church, raise your hands up. You know, who cares what people are doing around you? Maybe they don't want to raise their hands. Well, hey, maybe if you don't want to raise your hands at church, raise them up in your house. Turn on some music. Lord, I'm feeling down today, but those feelings are coming from my soul, not my spirit, because I got the joy of the Lord. I surrender, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't have unbelief. I don't have anger. That's not who I am in Christ. I am a new creature. I am born again. Hallelujah. I'm reborn. I am born again. Hallelujah. So get back to the basics. You're born of the spirit. You are born again. You got the Holy Ghost power. You have the joy of the Lord. You have the love of Jesus. You have unending favor with God. You are a son, a daughter of Abraham. You're a joint heir with Jesus. You are blessed with every spiritual blessing the heavenly realms in Christ. I mean, literally, you are blessed beyond belief. You just don't believe it yet. See? And then we base our blessings on what we see in the world. Oh, that guy's got a million dollar mansion. He's blessed. Well, no, maybe not necessarily. The real true blessing, like I talked about, is knowing Father God intimately. Knowing the Holy Spirit intimately. That is the true blessing. Okay? So make that your focus. I'll, I'll finish with that. Make that your focus. Always focus on your relationship with Jesus. Always, man, I feel the love of God. Focus, on, 
focus on Jesus Christ, okay? He is your answer, not me, not your pastor, not the prophet down the street, not the guy on television, just Jesus. Just go to Jesus Christ in prayer. Just pray to Jesus from your heart. And if you don't know how to pray that well, write him a letter, okay? I know somebody that didn't know how to pray that well, and I said, hey, why don't you write letters to Jesus? So she'd sit down and write letters to Jesus. And you know what? God started answering her prayers. Her letters, okay? So you, you're, maybe you don't know how to pray that well. Write a letter. Lord, I really want to, you know, one time I wrote, uh, I, got a, I, got a, I got a book, you know, when I was really ill. And uh, it was, Lord, teach me to pray. You know, it was this book. And I remember reading it. And I don't really remember anything in the book. But it had a little area where you where you first open it up. I think it says write down some prayers or something you want from the Lord or something. And I remember writing in my little uh, handwriting. I didn't really have the I don't really have the greatest handwriting. So I wrote down, Lord, please, uh, I want to be delivered from cigarettes because I was smoking cigarettes at the time. I was really addicted to cigarettes. Okay, and it was really tormenting to me. And I didn't get free from cigarettes until I realized God loved me if I smoked or I didn't smoke. And then the desire for smoking lifted out of my body one night. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> so uh, know that God loves you, and then. And you can be free from stuff. It's a lot easier to be free from stuff by God's love than screaming at demons and begging God all day. Okay? Start believing God loves you. Okay? He purchased, he purchased you on the cross. You're purchased by the blood of Jesus. You belong to God. Hey, Lord, you want me to quit smoking? Here I am, Lord. Hey, Lord, you want me to stop watching that? Here I am, Lord. Change me. Hey, Lord, you want me to stop eating so much? Hey, here I am. Change me, Lord. Hey, Lord, you want me uh, to change my attitude with my husband or my wife? Here I am, Lord. Help me. And that's what you do. Just surrender, okay? And so I wrote this prayer down. Uh, Lord, help me deliver me from cigarettes. <laughs> it was like a little prayer. Years later, like six years or something later, look at this. Uh, I was going through my bookshelf or whatever. Saw the book. And I opened up, uh, I opened up the book. And I saw where I wrote that in there. And here I was six years later and I was free from cigarettes. You know, I was free before that, but, you know. So write down a prayer maybe. Maybe that's what you need to do. And you know what? I'll end, uh, I was going to end with that. But I'll, excuse me, I'll end with this. You ready? Okay, so it says that we, we, uh, we pray and seek God for things. And James, it basically says that we ask amiss so that we can consume it upon our lusts. And so, you know, you don't have because you don't ask, all right? So first of all, ask for things for the Lord. Ask great things. Believe that he's going to give you your heart's desires because God loves to grant the desires of the righteous. But remember, when we pray, there's that wilderness experience. And this is a good way to end this, Lord. I love you. So you pray right here. Then your answered prayer is right here, okay? So when you pray, your prayer is already answered, okay? So you, you pray a heartfelt prayer. Lord, I want a better job. I want to make more money so I can afford to send my kids to college. That's your prayer from your heart, okay? It was a sincere prayer. You cried out to the Lord in believing that, okay? So your prayer was answered in heaven because it says that if we ask anything, according to his will, he answers us, okay? So he answered us. Okay, so then over here, so here you are here. Let's say this is 19, or let's say this is 2018. Over here is 2021, where God has your new job, where you're going to make a ton of money, be able to prosper your family. Okay? So we answered your prayer, not in your time frame, because you wanted it over here, 2019, right? But so let's say the prayer is over here, 2021, because I usually, when I pray now, uh, you know, for big things, I usually give the Lord, you know, three to ten years to answer, I guess. <laughs> so, because uh, so, he's got to maneuver stuff, he's got to get your character built, all that stuff. So I, I just kind of relax. I pray and know the Lord's going to answer in a couple years. So I don't really, I don't really, um, I don't really even, I know that I can pray and the Lord will answer me. It just might take some time. Okay, so that's good though. All right, so, because uh, then you get perseverance in prayer because I'm going to explain to you. So here you go. You pray 2021. Now this, this little time frame in here, these two years, let's say, right? Two or three years. That is your wilderness experience where you're going to be tested, where the enemy is going to test you and he's going to try to prevent you from receiving your promise. See, this is good wisdom here, guys. I like this. <laughs> I'm getting from it. Okay, so he's testing you here. In the wilderness. So you pray for the new car. Okay, you got and it's going to come in a year. But you don't know that. You think it's going to come next week. So the enemy gets mad at you because you don't have a car yet. Or you get mad, you get mad at God because you don't have a car yet. And you're like, oh, I don't understand. But God has a nice car for you here. You pray here. Now you're going through wilderness experience. And you're now you're supposed to persevere in, in faith to receive the promise of God. That's how it works. Okay? So your, your, your answer is already answered, but you have to get through the testing and the faith building and the perseverance to get the promise. See? 
Abraham had to go for a long time until he got the promise of Isaac. Okay, Joseph was in prison for a long time until he received what was promised him, right? Where his family would bow to him. Okay, remember the prophetic dream he had. So a lot of you have prophetic words and all that stuff, and it hasn't come to pass yet, and you're, oh, I don't understand. It. Don't let the enemy take you into negativity. Okay, it's a lie. You just you prayed or you got a prophetic word. The answer is down here. God's taking you on this journey to get your character built, to get you ready for the wonderful thing he has for you. So remember, the promise of God is always yes. And in him is amen. So God, uh, you know, you wanted healing. You want to receive healing. You prayed for it. You've been seeking the Lord. You take communion. You go to the healing room, whatever you do. Right. You really want to be healed. Okay, you're down here. Okay, your answer is here. You got to go through the process until you receive what's promised you okay so you want to persevere in in prayer you want to persevere in worship you want to relax a little bit and enjoy your relationship with the holy spirit get to know him i learned that god's really not religious at all and it's totally backwards than what i used to think totally backwards what people think in the world my gosh it's amazing (laughs) okay so god loves sinners it's amazing guys i was a bartender at a nightclub I was a schizophrenic on the street. I mean, I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody. And the Lord loves me. He died for me on the cross. It's beautiful, guys. It's a love story. God loves me. See? Just like he loves you. So where'd you come from? How bad is your past? What are you dealing with right now? Allow God to create some sort of beautiful love story in your life. Okay, I hope this encouraged you today. Guys, this is Nick Grimson from thefathersfriends.org. Tomorrow is day 29, okay? And I'm going to do prayers with you tomorrow. So it's going to be great. We're going to, we're going to pray for a little bit tomorrow. And uh, I really believe God, God is going to uh, give miracles out to people. People are going to be healed. They're going to receive deliverance right there watching the video. I really believe that because God loves you and God has a plan for you. Okay, God doesn't want you to be sick the rest of your life or poor the rest of your life or whatever. We just have to start believing correctly. Directly. We're blessed all the time, no matter what our life or our body is telling us or our emotions are telling us. That's what faith is. Faith is believing before you receive anything. So if you're dealing with depression, start believing you have joy and that you're delivered from depression 2,000 years ago. And then believe that until you receive what is promised, deliverance from depression. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. All right. So, guys, go to the website. You can donate, uh, thefathersfriends.org. Uh, click donate right there. You can donate on the website. You can mail in a money order or check if you'd like. Our, our address is on there. Thank you so much for your support of the ministry. We're a nonprofit organization. We want to win tons of souls for Jesus. Uh, we, we fund our 1-888-KNOW-HIM number from donations and everything from donations. So 1-888-KNOW-HIM if you need prayer today. We'd love to pray for you. 1-888-KNOW. Him, okay? 188 know him. Also, you can go to our website and get some ministry resources, helpful things. My book, Defeating Mental Illness, is on there. Um, and you can get that at thefathersfriends.org. Also, my travel schedule. And uh, you can become a ministry partner. A uh, monthly supporter helps us because uh, it helps us budget and stuff. So if you'd like to sign up for 5 bucks a month or 50 bucks a month or whatever, that'd be great. It would help us a lot. Guys, uh, I'm going to end with a prayer. Lord. Thank you for day 28. Tomorrow's 29, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray today that somebody out there gets blessed with the Holy Ghost. Just gets really blessed by your spirit. Gets really blessed, Lord. I ask that you'd release your angels to minister to people out there and that somebody would feel your presence and know, Lord, that you're with them. Thank you, Lord, for transforming your people through believing correctly through the truth of God's word that transforms us from the inside out. Thank you for living inside of us, Holy Spirit, and giving us hope. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for your name, King Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Guys, thanks. Bye.